Tech Applied Science, Unit 3 Biology, Nerve Impulses. In the last video, we talked about the structure of uh, neurons, and we talked a bit about the signal traveling down the neuron. And here we're actually going to describe how the signal travels down. The signal, we call it an action potential. It's an electrical signal, an action potential. And how does it travel down the axon? How does it travel through the axon? So here's the inside and the outside of the axon. And notice that the inside is negative relative to the outside. The inside is negative, the outside is positive. There is a, a voltage, a potential difference, a voltage. Now, if the axon is at rest, then the resting potential is minus 70 millivolts. That's the potential difference between the inside and the outside, minus 70 millivolts, because the inside is negative. So this changes as the signal travels down. Notice that what happens is that the inside becomes positive and the outside becomes negative. But then this pulse uh, travels down the axon and once it's gone, then it returns back to where it was again. There's a graph that you should be able to sketch, an important graph, which is how the voltage changes with time at any point. So we start at minus 70, then the voltage will shoot up all the way up to plus 30 millivolts but then it goes down again it becomes negative again down to about minus 90 and then it creeps back up again up to minus 70 which is where we started and this little blip of voltage is our signal our nerve impulse our action potential so why does the voltage change what causes the change in voltage well, it's positive and negative due to the amount, the concentration of ions. We're talking potassium ions and sodium ions. And what happens is that these ions can move through the membrane. Now, this is an amazing simulation. See the red things coming in, see the green things coming out. Let's watch another nerve impulse. So the red things coming in, they're sodium ions. Okay, the green things coming out, they're potassium ions. Okay, notice that they're coming in and out through gates. Notice that some of the gates are open all the time. Notice that some of them can be open or closed. So through these gates in the membrane, these ions can move in and out of the cell. And that's what causes the change in voltage, the change in uh, potential difference between the inside and the outside. Okay. So sodium and potassium ions can move through the membrane. How do they move through the membrane? Well, some of the gates are open all the time. So they just move by diffusion. They go from a higher to a lower concentration. Some of the gates can be open or closed. Okay, we say that they are voltage gated. If the voltage reaches a certain value, then the gates open. And there are pumps and the pumps actually grab hold of them and make them move. So there are different ways that these ions can get in and out of the membrane. Sodium and potassium channels, they rely on diffusion, which is the movement from a high concentration to a low concentration. Some of them are always open and some of them are voltage gated. If the voltage reaches a certain value, then they open and lots of ions will move through them. Then this pump returns the ions to where they were at the start to do that requires energy. The pump needs energy. It needs ATP to work. And this process is called active transport because it's actually working against diffusion. 
so it requires energy. So the pumps move the ions to where they were. Notice the pump is moving the sodium ions out of the cell, sorry, out of the axon and the potassium ions into the axon. What happens step by step? So a stimulus, a stimulus comes along and opens the sodium channels. The sodium channels are open. The sodium ions diffuse into the cell and the voltage starts to rise from minus 70, which was the resting potential. Now, if the voltage, if or when the voltage reaches minus 50, which is the threshold voltage it's called, if it gets to minus 50, then the voltage gated sodium channels open and you get lots and lots of sodium ions entering the cell and the voltage rises rapidly up to plus 30 millivolts. What happens as well then is that the potassium channels open and they come into the cell. So the sodium gates close and the potassium gates open. Sodium ions leave the cell, potassium ions leave the cell. The voltage falls to 90 millivolts. It goes all the way down to minus 90. And then the pumps start to do their job and they put the ions back to where they were at the beginning and you return to the resting potential. Uh, when lots of sodium ions rush in and the voltage gets bigger and bigger, that's called depolarization. Okay. Uh, when the potassium ions leave the cell, then that's called repolarization. And that's when things are going back down again. The voltage is going back down again. And then as it returns to the beginning, that's actually called hyperpolarization. This is the graph. It's a bit more detailed than before. So we start at minus 70, an initial stimulus, some of the sodium channels open. If the stimulus is bigger than the threshold voltage, all of the channels open, loads and loads of sodium ions rush in. That's depolarization. Okay, then the sodium channels are inactivated, the potassium channels open up, the voltage goes down, 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 all the way down to minus 90 millivolts. And then the pumps do their job. They put the sodium ions back, they put the potassium ions back, and we return back to the start. So be able to sketch and label this graph. If the stimulus is small, very small, and we don't reach the threshold voltage, then there is no signal. If there's a very, very large stimulus, then what happens is that it's not that the action potential is bigger, it's just that there's more and more, the frequency of the signal increases. There's more and more pulses. Okay, so the strength of the stimulus will change the signal, not the strength of the signal. Now, uh, we mentioned in the last video that the signal travels faster in a myelinated neuron. Now, why is that then? Well, that's another fantastic animation. The action potential travels faster in a myelinated neuron. And what happens is that the signal jumps from the nodes of Ranvier, from one node of Ranvier to another. It's, it leaps, the signal leaps. It's called a saltatory. Saltatory means leaping. And that's a lot quicker than just traveling through the axon. So the signal jumps from node to Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier, and that's saltatory conduction, and it's much quicker. Why does it jump? Because basically the, the myelinated sheath, what it does is it stops the sodium ions entering. So depolarization can't happen. So the signal has to jump from node to node to node. Okay, the signal jumps from gap to gap instead. And this is called saltatory conduction. It means leaping. 
Here are the key words in your answers. Make sure you know what all of these words mean. And if you get a nice big six mark question, make sure you use you know, plenty of these words in your answer. Here are some questions you should be able to do. If you're in my class, this would be a homework. Sketch how membrane potential varies with time. That's the voltage. Sketch how the voltage varies with time as a nerve impulse passes down the neuron on a large graph. Include labels on the axis and values for the voltages and add these labels, the initial stimulus, threshold voltage, depolarization, repolarization and hyperpolarization. Describe the motion of sodium and potassium ions during a nerve impulse. Why doesn't a small stimulus produce a signal? What difference does it make if the strength of the stimulus increases? And describe why signals travel faster through myelinated neurons. Again, that could be a six mark question. 